My mother was the artist type. I remember at a very young age, singing around the house, singing stuff that I didn't hear in church. Just an extremely creative woman. But let's hear a little bit of that. Out of the three of us kids, she chose me to be the one that would go take music lessons. And I started taking music lessons at a very young age. When I got to high school, there were no high schools for the performing arts. My goal, I wanted to play bass in the uh, Philadelphia Orchestra. I wanted to be one of the first African-Americans in, in the Philadelphia Orchestra, so I was studying classical music. Mr. Jamo was a really important person to me. When we were in high school, at one point, he said, you know, have you ever heard much jazz music? And so I got turned on to Charlie Mingus, Stan Getz, and then later, everyone else. And I really thank him for that. I was in a band with Bayard Lancaster. He was an avant-garde saxophone player. Bayard was a little crazy. He says, listen, you want to do a gig at a world-famous jazz club? I said, oh, yeah, yeah. So we go play the showboat. He put sunglasses on me. I had this suit and, and my drummer, the drummer was even younger and he put these big wide sunglasses on that he had gotten in Paris and kind of covered the guy's face and we went in. That was my first experience playing in a jazz club. I, I loved it, I loved it. I started out in New York playing with Horace Silver, then I played with Art Blakey and a few others, and then eventually, a uh, Stan Getz, and then eventually I played with Joe Henderson. And we were playing a gig in Philadelphia, and our piano player couldn't make it a particular week. So Joe said, I'm bringing this guy down from New York, and his name is Chick Corea. And so he came down, and it was one of those bonds musically that happened. We really bonded musically. It was almost supernatural in many ways. And we eventually connected up and started playing together with a group. Chick and myself had a pretty healthy classical music appetite, so our records had compositions. That's kind of what distinguished Return to Forever. When I try to explain that period to people, I have to be very specific. Yes, we grew up and we listened to Coltrane and we listened to Miles, but we also listened to Jimi Hendrix. We were putting everything out there. The idea of playing different types of music, a lot of it for me had to do with friendship. I've never really defined myself within a genre of music. I play bass. I play the bass. Thank you.